Hey everybody, uh, I got a few more Max for Live devices I wanted to take a look at with you. Uh, both of these are available on www.maxforlive.com. Uh, they are uh, put up by two folks there. The usernames you'll be able to see inside the clips. I'm going to try to uh, reference them also so you can go direct in the comment section uh, of this video. So remember to subscribe and see more reviews and some pointers on how to do your own programming. So both of these uh, uh, devices basically do the same thing uh, in two different ways though. What's really neat about it is what they do on the inside. Um, so let's uh, zero see. Zero seconds. Whoops. Okay. Uh, I had to start off my timer there so I know what, what time's going on. All right. So the first one, uh, you'll notice I heard, uh, let me just demonstrate them here a little bit for you. So, okay. I can set the duration of that one. I can set it pretty slow if I want. Okay. Now I'll turn that one off. And let's hit the next one. Same basic idea, right? This is this one's nice because I can hold it and let go. I also can change the behavior to be a full stop, in which case I hit tape stop, and it even turns off the uh, uh, live transport there. And this one is a little different in that it has a beat mode, so I can say, okay, how many beats do you want to wind down in? So let's say I want to wind it. Oh, well, that's a little tricky. Let's see. Seven or nine. Ooh, that's kind of a drag. <laughs> I might want to tweak that one. Okay. So in one measure, it uh, winds down. Okay. So let's take a look in under the covers on these two. There's pitch drop. And there is tape stop. So they both open up in presentation mode. Let's see. What happened? Let's get uh, that other guy up here, shall we? Window, pitch drop. And we'll try to zoom in a little bit. I'm not going to zoom in too much because once we go into patch mode, it's going to take up a lot more of the screen, I bet. Okay. So this one is by Zalo, user Zalo, and this one the user didn't put his name in there, so uh, I'm going to have to point you to it in the links. All right, anyway, so this is pitch drop in here, and let's look at tape stop. Yeah, a lot, a lot more going on in tape stop. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with more kind of how he lets you do... Um, you know, the full stop. It also lets you do note uh, length ones rather than just the overall time. So let's look at pitch drop first. Now, both of these also, they use some different devices, uh, some different objects inside of here. The uh, pitch drop one relies more on the um, tap in and tap out objects, which if you have seen my other tutorial on creating a simple delay line in, in uh, Max, uh, you should definitely check that out if you haven't, I should say, uh, to talk about how uh, the tap in and tap out work. So basically, uh, it creates a, a buffer that uh, you can then uh, tap into. <laughs> so you set up, a, like it sets up a 20 second buffer. Whoops, my computer wants to go to sleep. No, don't go to sleep. Um, you set up a buffer and then you can control a delay into that buffer, exactly playback in that buffer where it, where it gets played from. Uh, and that's the the the, uh, the main thing of here. You have, you have two of these tap in, tap out things that are controlled by a ramp that uh, is going to smoothly basically drop down. It's going to ramp down using this uh, the curve uh, device, or excuse me, curve object here. When you hit the, the tape stop, uh, it's going to trigger this message over here, which tells it to go from zero to one or one to zero, um, depending on if you're uh, resuming or stopping and the amount of time it's going to take. And so that tr uh, controls curve, which sets up a, a nice uh, smooth ramp uh, and then uses, well, it controls the smooth ramp to control that uh, the amount of delay and by adding you know starting off with zero delay and adding up to a whole bunch of delay you effectively slow down if that makes any sense right the first time with no delay at all you're playing exactly the same if you delay more and more and more you're going to wind up playing a sample behind or two samples behind or three samples behind and so on until it slows down now that's the, so that's the, the what creates the slowing down effect and then he also uses this uh, SVF which is a, a, a filter and controls the 
um, the frequency of the filter, so it also kind of fades out. Uh, he uses this, uh, this crossfader patch that he's created here to create a smooth ramp so that uh, the, the dry signal, which is coming straight through, uh, and the uh, ramp signal fades between the two and then fades out using the SVF. So it's a nice smooth fade out, and he really does a great job with that. So that's what's going on here. Sets his drop time. That sets up the message here. That his prepend forms this message, right? The resume the button here. Uh, if it's uh, if it's one, it, it triggers this. If it's resume, it just basically turns the crossfader back and lets things through here. So resume goes straight through and resets this. And uh, when you stop it, it, triggers this message. Triggers the curve. Nice smooth. Um, uh, it's going to turn the filters down, so basically kind of fade things out, and also you know create that delay as it's going on. So this patch is pretty straightforward. The other one, a little bit trickier. Uh, the real meat of it is uh, it uses buffers instead of the tap in tap out, which is a little bit more elaborate. Um, basically, it sets up this buffer called tape stop. It sets a certain amount of time, and uh, then it uses record to record into that buffer. And it uses the groove object to play that back. Uh, so the groove object gets used a lot. You know, if you want to trigger a sample, all that, that's really a, a, an object you want to look into. So uh, there's a lot more going on here, but that's the the meat of it. Is you know using the you know setting up this buffer, and you'll see it sets up the buffer according to all in here is how much time you're going to need in the buffer according to how quickly you want to ramp down. So he sets all that up in here automatically, uh, or you know as so you choose time or beats that will set up the length of your buffer. As you see these gate objects in here; these are really kind of neat. Uh, in use, the nice, nice graphical object too. You can kind of see it switches between the two depending on which one you choose, All right? That's a neat object. Uh, I think it's called a G switch. Uh, or, yeah, G switch. Wow, off the top of my head, not bad. Okay, so that's what's going on there. It sets up the size of that. Sets up your buffer. Uh, here's your trigger for rolling down or resuming. So, and it also down here. See this. M4L API toggle transport. That's the thing that really, if you use the uh, the the full stop mode, it's going to talk to the Max for Live API and shut that down altogether. So anyway, uh, then over here, we're basically creating the oh, load bang that sets up some things. The line he's using the line object to get you know interpolate a nice smooth line uh, as it. Uh, uh, he's using a balance object. So let's see, I'm not super familiar with that patch. Let's see. That's always nice. If you're not sure of something, you can always come down and say, open, ah, well, go back again. Zoom in again. Sorry about this. Taking more time than I planned on. Okay, zooming in. Click on that. And since this is in a B patcher, open the original. Okay, so you can see balance two stereo signals with constant power. So this is just a simple balance kind of uh, 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 object so that you can, you know, kind of uh, balance, you know, fade, cross fade between things. It's nice. It's great having all these built in functions you can just refer to. Okay, so this is our going to be our crossfader. Uh, that uh, is our tape stop sound versus our slowed down sound, right? So the plug in is where the sound comes in, and normally it goes straight through here to the plug out, but it also goes and records into our tape stop buffer, and then later on, all in here, you'll see the groove is what's playing things out, and that's what is also the thing that's going to balance in between as uh, the automatic tape stop hits. Right, it's going to sit there and crossfade, and then play this kind of tape stop, which is slowing down according to um, this uh, interpolated line that's set up according to you know your time and so on. So that's a real quick walkthrough in eight and a half, nine minutes. Um, so it's just to show you there's a, a bunch of different ways. There's no one way to do something in, in live uh, or Max for Live for that matter. Uh, you've got lots and lots of options. We're seeing you know two different uh, users' approaches here two ways of doing the same thing, uh, accomplishing the same thing, and some different objects, you know, check out buffer, groove, record, uh, if you're into, you know, sample playback and manipulating that, and again, you know, the tap in, tap out, really, really useful for doing like simple delays and some kind of cool effects where you're manipulating, you know, the amount of delay dynamically, it does some really, really cool stuff. 
So check out my other tutorials, subscribe. I'm going to be continuing to do reviews and do some original patches. And also, if you do get a chance, check out my friend Ear Trash over uh, on his channel. We're going to be doing some exciting stuff, kind of trading off uh, and on on our different channels. Uh, so look forward to that. Take care. Hope this is a little bit of inspiration and uh, have fun with your own Max for Live patches.